A staple of WCW during the late 80s and 90s was the War Games match, a match created by Dusty Rhodes that would feature two teams slugging it out inside two rings, surrounded by a giant cage. The concept started off as pretty straightforward and simple, a gimmick match that would usually feature five or four of WCW's top babyfaces taking on the four horsemen, and War Games would end up becoming quite the attraction during the summer of 1987. So well received was the bout that 11 War Games matches were booked the following year while Crockett Promotions was on tour. War Games would then evolve into an annual match that would take place on WCW pay per views, with some of the 90s matches being absolutely brilliant. Stinger Squadron vs The Dangerous Alliance at WrestleWar 1992 is an all time fan favourite and for good reason too. The Horsemen vs Sting, Fly and Brian and the Steiners the previous year was also well received, and one of my personal favourites featured this relatively new faction called the NWO taking on Team WCW, this took place at Fall Brawl 1996, and this is the match that kicked off Sting's radical change of character. Things got a little silly though by the time we reached 1998's War Games match at Fall Brawl. This one consisted of three teams with three guys representing a different group. We had Team WCW, Team Wolfpack, and Team Hollywood. And whoever got the pinfall win would earn himself a title shot a month later on pay per view. The action inside the ring was absolutely forgettable, with most people only remembering the Ultimate Warrior shenanigans during the bout. The following year, War Games didn't return to television, breaking an 8 year streak of War Games matches taking place on pay per view. The year 1990 also didn't feature a War Games match. Just when you think it's safe to put something to rest, and just when you think War Games was safe from all the other nonsense happening in WCW during the final year of the company's existence, here comes Vince Russo with a new, revamped version of War Games known as War Games 2000 Russo's Revenge. Held in Dallas, Texas, absolutely everything we knew and loved about classic War Games matches was thrown out the window in favour of WCW's three tiered steel cage that made its debut in the Ready to Rumble movie. The rules of the match were completely changed also, while the most traditional War Games matches could only end when one member of a team submitted once all competitors were in the ring, a period of the bout known as the match beyond. This one would mix in the rules from the triple cage match at Slamboree 2000, while maintaining the War Games format of staggered entrances. We have two teams, the WCW world title hangs above three stacked cages, a superstar has to scale all three cages, retrieve the belt, and successfully leave the bottom cage in order to win the match and the WCW Heavyweight Championship. Like Fall Brawl 1998, it never made sense to me why teams would fight over a prize that only benefits one person, but anyway. This cage match barely qualified as a War Games bout, and many consider this the absolute worst contest that ever included War Games in its name. It's easily one of the most overbooked War Games matches you'll ever see, and just like the WCW Royal Rumble match or the Countdown to Armageddon match we looked at last week, it's kind of like art imitating life in terms of how messy and chaotic WCW was at the time. Just like Countdown to Armageddon, War Games 2000 didn't take place on pay per view. The final War Games match in WCW happened on Monday Nitro, and the date was September 4th, 2000. Let's take a look at WCW's Triple Cage first of all, and I'm gonna be honest, I actually like the idea of the Triple Cage. That doesn't mean I liked how WCW booked matches inside the structure, but the three tiered steel cage does have a presence that I think looked really good on TV. I'd be interested to hear from people who actually saw this thing in person. Multi tiered cages were tested out before on WCW television, with the most notorious example being the ill fated Doomsday Cage match at Uncensored 96. That match was a real mess also by the way, but the whole concept of the Doomsday Cage match was so different from War Games 2000 that the only similarities we have is the fact that there was multiple levels to the cage that surrounded the ring. That's a hard hitting question right there, which was worse, War Games 2000 or the Doomsday Cage match? The cage that was used in War Games 2000 was featured in the Ready to Rumble movie that was released in April of 2000. 
In the movie, Diamond Dallas Page gets slammed on the very top of the triple cage by fictional superstar Jimmy King. Page falls through every level of the cage before hitting the ring, and King wins the WCW Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> what more can I say about this movie that already hasn't been said? In order to generate publicity, David Arquette, who starred in the movie, became the real WCW World Heavyweight Champion and wrestling fans around the world got seriously pissed off. You've got a mix of fans nowadays who say it was actually a great move because it's something that's still remembered to this very day, but we can all list other horrible real events that are still remembered to this very day. Just because it was remembered doesn't mean it was good. Plus, to the absolute surprise of no one, Arquette winning the WCW Championship didn't help the company in their battle for survival against the World Wrestling Federation. Not only did David Arquette show up in WCW television though, the Triple Cage from the Ready to Rumble movie also made an appearance on WCW pay per view. Arquette defended the WCW Championship against Jeff Jarrett and Diamond Dallas Page in the main event of Slambury 2000. Above the three cages was the WCW Championship, whoever retrieved it first won the match. Double J got the win after Arquette betrayed Diamond Dallas Page, Mike Awesome interfered in the match and Kenyon ran down after the bell to help DDP, and the show ended with Kenyon getting thrown off the first cage. It wasn't a good match, but again, I liked the idea of the triple cage. And that brings us to Monday Nitro on September 4th and the War Games match that took place on TNT. The Triple Cage makes a return in a match named War Games 2000, Russo's Revenge. Why did this War Games match have the self-indulgent tagline of Russo's Revenge? Well, it was revenge for Goldberg almost burying Vince Russo in the desert one week prior on Monday Nitro. I'm not kidding either by the way. Russo had aligned himself with Kevin Nash, Jeff Jarrett and Scott Steiner around this time period. Don't ask why, because allegiances changed on a weekly basis in WCW around this time period. But all you need to know is that these guys were the heels. Bill Goldberg wanted to bury Russo in the New Mexico desert, Russo's sandy grave was already dug up, and so Goldberg spent most of the 28th of August episode of Nitro trying to hunt down Russo. Russo spent the night trying to get back up, but his friends either flat out refused or they got attacked by Goldberg. In the end, Big Vito said he would help Russo, a guy who recently had his own issues with Vince. In a swerve that practically everyone could see from a mile off, Russo got backstabbed by his new best friend. Goldberg brings Russo to the desert, and Bret Hart shows up to lend Goldberg a hand. The hitman then turns on Bill, Bret nails Goldberg with a shovel, and Russo's nightmare of getting buried in the desert doesn't become a reality. Still, Russo wanted revenge for everything that happened to him, and that's why we got War Games 2000, Russo's Revenge. I should also mention that Kevin Nash defeated Booker T on this same episode of Nitro for the WCW Championship, thanks to Jarrett, Steiner and Russo. So Kevin was the WCW Champion when War Games 2000 took place the next week on Nitro. The Triple Cage War Games match was announced officially on WCW Thunder mere days before the match took place, meaning that War Games 2000 got the absolute minimum amount of promotion possible. The cage lowers down during the first half of the show and Russo cuts a promo. He goes over the rules of this updated version of War Games, announcing that Nash, Jarrett, Steiner and Russo himself will take on Ernest Miller, Sting, Goldberg and Booker T later inside the Triple Cage. It's announced also that Russo's opponents will have to qualify in order to take part in the matchup, so fans would end up seeing the babyfaces wrestle twice on this episode of Nitro, a bad move no matter what way you look at it. Kevin Nash, the WCW champion, isn't happy that his title is on the line tonight. Kevin says he isn't a fighting champion, he only has to defend the WCW title once a month if he really wants to. And Russo says there must be some sort of communication problem here because Nash does whatever Russo says. Nash goes to attack Russo, the lights go out, Sting shows up. Russo tells Nash to attack Sting, but Nash refuses before leaving the cage. The Stinger eventually goes after Russo and Vince has to climb the cage to escape the Stinger. Steiner, Jared and the natural born thrillers try to help out Russo, Booker T and Ernest Miller come down to even the odds, but Russo escapes unharmed after a long chase. 
Goldberg then appears at the entranceway and Russo gets out of Dodge and after the segment, Jared and Steiner are seen backstage ripping Russo a new one for picking fights he knows he can't win. Sting wins his qualifying match first, a triple threat encounter against the Great Muda and Vampiro. Vampiro takes the Scorpion Death Drop at the end of the contest and keep in mind, this is the second time Sting made an appearance on Nitro in the space of about 15 minutes. Booker T was forced to wrestle his brother Stevie Ray in order to qualify for war games and Booker won the match. Russo was trying to cause some friction here between Booker and Stevie, but Stevie accepted the loss and he wished Booker good luck in the triple cage match. Russo then screwed up by booking Ernest Miller in a handicap match against Chronic. Chronic were victorious, but this meant Clark and Adams were now part of war games, also meaning that Vince's team of four was going up against a team of five. Scott Steiner's backstage reaction to this was absolute gold. Not only did Bill Goldberg destroy Shane Douglas to qualify for war games, but Goldberg also took out members of the Natural Born Thrillers during the matchup. So we end up with Booker T, Sting, Brian Clark, Brian Adams and Goldberg taking on Vince Russo, Scott Steiner, Jeff Jarrett and Kevin Nash inside War Games 2000. Nash's world title is on the line and it seems like Big Sexy might be turning his back on Vince Russo. This thing was already convoluted enough before 9 men stepped into a 3 tiered ring, and the participants of the match were already overexposed on this episode of Monday Nitro. Russo's style of crash TV, according to Russo, was formulated as a way to stop fans from changing the channel. The pace of a show was turned way up to keep fans from getting bored, but the actual quality of the content, and I'm just saying this as a viewer, that really ended up suffering and this episode of Nitro gives us a perfect example of why it just didn't work in WCW. Some fans loved it, the vast majority of fans didn't. And something to think about here, the whole War Games 2000 announcement and the qualifying matches that took place on Nitro, that's something the WWF could have squeezed a whole month's worth of television out of and in doing that, a lot more anticipation would have been built. Tickets and a pay-per-view could have been sold for this thing too, if done with a little more care, but the whole thing was hotshotted and in the end, it turned out to be one of, if not the, worst war games matches in WCW history. Alright, I've put it off long enough, let's look at the match. Jeff Jarrett and Sting start the match off, we have 2 minute intervals before another superstar hits the ring. Tony Schiavone says the match can end at any time, so Sting could just climb up there right now, grab the belt, leave the cage through the door at the bottom level and that would be the end of War Games 2000, though the match has to start with the two competitors inside the ring. Sting gets the upper hand from the opening bell but Jarrah turns it around just before the next competitor comes out, Scotty Steiner wearing a mask to protect his nose. Sting tried to get up to the next cage but Jared and Steiner work together. Sting gets hit a few times with a ladder and he gets crotched on the top rope. The commentators use their common sense when questioning what would happen if Steiner grabs the belt and tries to walk out. Would we see Jared turn on Steiner or would Scott Wade and hand the belt to Russo? It's just a mess from a booking perspective and a what if perspective and really, it would have made way more sense if the WCW Championship wasn't on the line. But anyway, out next we have Chronic. Scott Steiner makes it to the second level and he uses bolt cutters to unlock the door to the third level. Why the door was locked, I have no idea, but Scott doesn't make it to cage three. Chronic made him on the second level and they gingerly lift Big Papa Pump overhead to ram his back into the cage ceiling. They perform a double gut buster also that had absolutely no impact. Vince Russo is our next entrant and he comes out holding a baseball bat, he's wearing a hockey helmet and he's also brought the Harris brothers along with him. Russo enters the cage while Jared and Sting go to work inside the ring, the Harris brothers climb up the cage and they begin fighting Chronic. This eventually leads to Chronic getting removed from the match as they can't stop fighting with Ron and Heavy D. Inside the ropes Vince Russo ends up taking a stinger splash. 
Russo then finds himself in a scorpion deathlock before Kevin Nash makes his way to the ring. It looks like Kevin wants to help Scott Steiner. Scott came down from the middle level to help Russo instead of grabbing the belt but anyway, Sting hits a stinger splash on Nash and Big Papa Pump. The icon goes for it one more time but Nash and Steiner move out of the way and Sting takes a choke slam from Big Sexy. Nash then turns his attention to Russo. He grabs Vince by the throat for a chokeslam but Steiner and Jared stop Russo from getting hurt. It looks like Nash has turned babyface as he also threatens to chokeslam Steiner and Jarrett but there's no time for that. Our next entrant is former WCW champion Booker T and Booker cleans house after stepping into the ring. Jarrett, Steiner and Russo get taken out but Nash hits a big boot on Booker. Russo gets a few shots into Sting but it looks like Nash still wants to take out Vince. Russo gets put in position for a jackknife but out comes the final entrant, Bill Goldberg. Kevin leaves the ring as Goldberg goes on the attack. Goldberg takes care of Jared and Steiner but Russo, of all people, stops Goldberg's momentum by using his baseball bat. While the heels handcuff Goldberg to the ropes, Booker T climbs up to the second cage and this makes the other superstars begin climbing up. Kevin Nash is not climbing any cages today and neither is Bill Goldberg. They both stay firmly on ground level as the other superstars try to make it to the third cage. It does make sense for Kevin Nash to keep himself fresh by waiting at the door so there is a little logic here but still I don't think Kevin was going to climb any cages tonight even if he was told to. Booker T ends up being the one who climbs right to the top to retrieve the WCW championship. Now all he has to do is leave through the bottom cage to win the match. Mark Madden, the absolute genius, says that Booker T should wear the belt to free up his hands and this is actually a good point. Russo also doesn't feel like climbing up there it seems, although to be fair, he did climb up during the promo at the beginning of the show. Tony Schiavone wonders why Sting allowed Booker T to walk right past him in the second cage not realising that Sting had been handcuffed and there's nothing Sting could do. Scott Steiner manages to take the belt off Booker T and Jarrett nails Booker with a guitar, a conveniently placed guitar in the middle cage. Jarrett then works on handcuffing Booker T as Scott Steiner throws the belt down to Vince Russo. Russo celebrates with the belt inside the ring and this leads to Ernest Miller hitting the ring. Miller kicks Russo, for whatever reason the cat then begins celebrating with the belt but Kevin Nash jumps into the ring and Miller takes a jackknife. Goldberg then breaks free from the handcuffs and he goes on a rampage. Everyone gets taken out with ease, Goldberg grabs the championship belt and he goes to leave the cage door but Bret Hart appears and he slams the door in Bill's face. Scott Steiner then hits Goldberg with the bat but we don't see that thanks to bad camera cuts and Goldberg gets thrown back into the ring along with the WCW championship. Russo grabs the belt, Nash grabs Russo and then the two men begin hugging it out as Russo hands the belt to Nash. Swerve bro, it's another swerve bro. The heels leave the ring together with Nash holding the world heavyweight title and there you go. War Games 2000, Russo's Revenge. Four moves were performed by the winner. Kevin Nash had a choke slam, a big boot, a knee strike and a jackknife powerbomb. Let that sink in for a moment. As mentioned earlier, if you want to know what was wrong with WCW during this time period then the 4th of September 2000 episode of Nitro gives you nothing but great examples. The legacy of JCP and WCW war games matches also has this blemish right at the end that reads Russo's revenge and that's kind of sad too because war games matches were generally loved by WCW fans. There were the odd hiccups such as the 1998 match and I personally wasn't a fan of the 1994 bout but still it was a cornerstone of world championship wrestling that didn't get the opportunity to go out with a bang. Once the WWE secured the rights to the war games name the match returned as an annual NXT bout and every NXT war games match has far surpassed Russo's revenge in terms of match quality. The biggest thing to admire about War Games 2000 for me is how good the triple cage looked and in a way putting War Games on Nitro was pretty cool for those who didn't buy pay per views 
but it's even difficult to call this a War Games match because it really doesn't feel like one at all. Give it a miss guys, nothing to see here. You can do a hell of a lot better by going back a few more years and looking at the other War Games matches from WCW's library. I'd recommend Wrestle War 1992 and even the very first War Games match in Atlanta from the 1987 Great American Bash Tour. If you want to learn a little more about the first War Games match, then check out my video on the subject. Thanks for watching guys and take care.